It's all right to be weak. To be honest with you, the more weak you are, it's a sign of the more humble you are. Because you know you're not walking in your own strength. That you're walking in supernatural strength of God. It's called his grace. And in grace, the fight is already fixed. How many would like to get in a fight and know that it's fixed? And you know it's fixed on your behalf. When David fought Goliath, don't you know the fight was fixed? David could have sworn with his eyes closed and went through his legs. It didn't make any difference. The fight was fixed. He understood the amazing part of God's grace. He says, because I come to you in the name of the Lord. I come in the name of the Lord. Glory to God. The one thing that you need for God's grace to remain in your life, you need to become the righteousness of God. David said, I was once young and now I'm old. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. We cannot live like the devil and be totally blessed in the grace of God. Even in the, when you're living like that, it's the grace of God that God has not allowed you to be taken off this earth. But there's another level of grace when you're walking into the favor of God. And when you're walking into the favor of God, you're walking in the purpose of God. And when you're walking in that purpose, that grace is more than enough. No matter what you go through. There's some in here that are hurting so bad. Just hurting. So many of you are so lonely. There's some of you cry almost every night in the pillow just from loneliness. Some of you have some, so many illnesses and pills and you look in your purse and your purse is full of pills. But I have a, something to tell you about those. Drag them in the middle of the rain. Drag all that stuff. Pills and all. Hallelujah. Because we win. We win. Tell somebody we win. We win. We win. We have the best Holy, Holy Ghost cut man that ever lived. Isn't that awesome? If you could teach that to your children, about the grace of God. The hard part of teaching this to our children is we have to be humble to do it. That whatever we do, we do by the grace of God. He plays like that, not just because he practiced. There are a lot of people who practice and they're lousy. There's a lot of people who practice. They never can play like you do. You play that way because God has graced you to do that. Amen. If you got a wonderful job, don't think that you got it because you're so all that. Amen. You have that job because God has graced you to have that job. Amen. I have a wonderful wife. I, I can't take credit for that. I can't say these are the 12 steps of getting a wonderful wife. First of all, I need to stop lying. That's step one. The two truth is that if God brings somebody in your life, you have to understand that that's the grace of God. Hallelujah. And the more you... You do that, 
the weaker you become. And what I'm talking about, you're no longer walking in your own strength. And the more I'm not walking in my own strength, whose strength do you think I'm walking in? This is why he says that he exalts the humble. He brings low those who are, who are proud or prideful. Not in your strength, but in the strength of God. I, 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 want, I want this altar. I really want to pray for you. But I, I, want, to, I want to pray for people who are willing to humble themselves. And I want to pray for people who, who you, even though you're, you might be afraid, that you're willing to drag all your fears right down to this, this pulpit. That, that you will, will understand, even in your time of weakness, in your time of infirmities, that God's strength is made perfect. 